So let me just tell you where we're heading. We're heading to verse 14 of Luke chapter 2, which is this. You remember when all of the heavenly hosts gather, all of the, the sort of army of God, all these angels appear eventually, and they cry out, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And so where we're going to land in a minute is the peace of God. That's what we're going to be thinking about, the peace of God. Um, I wonder, how has your peace been this year? I wonder if you've had days, weeks, months of feeling rather disturbed with life and all that's going on. There's been so much in the world this year that could have disturbed our peace. Perhaps it was anxiety about catching COVID. Perhaps it was anxiety about the restrictions that we were under and the feeling of perhaps not being able to go out or see family or do the things that you would normally like to do. The impact that it had on church life or family life. Or, or perhaps it was sort of anxiety <clears throat> if you actually had COVID. And I, and I can testify that I felt like that when I had COVID. There was like a feeling of dread. Oh no, what's going to happen now? Or... Uh, uh, perhaps an anxiety at turning on the news. <laughs> and I know, I know there's a lot of people that just get to the point where they're just like, I'm not looking at it. And, just, you know, and you see the latest statistics and the latest number of people in hospital and all the other uh, statistics and propaganda. Perhaps it was those graphs and statistics that you dreaded seeing that they would put on the, the TV. Or perhaps it's nothing to do with COVID whatsoever, but there's something else that really disturbed your peace during this a year. As I say, we're going to be thinking about the peace uh, that God gives in a short while. But let's first of all just like uh, get the context again. We mustn't look at the Bible and just like pick a verse out and not look at where it's come from. And of course, at this time of year, it's good to think through these details. Over the last few weeks, we've been thinking about the, the, the real angels of Christmas. Uh, we thought about the appearance of Gabriel to Zechariah at the start, um, promising the gift of John, who, be, who, we, who we know as John the Baptist, uh, to him and his wife Elizabeth. Then we thought about the promise to Mary about what was going to happen when it was announced to her that she would have a, a baby and she was to call him Jesus. Um, then, then we heard um, about the way that the angel spoke to Joseph at the carol service. Joseph, just confirming the things that uh, Mary had already heard. You remember he was getting ready to, to divorce Mary, uh, but the Lord made it clear by sending an angel, no, 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 this is a God thing. You must uh, carry on, and, and so he did. And today, the fourth of the angels, and there's one more tomorrow, but the fourth of the, fourth of the angels is the appearance of the angels to the shepherds announcing the actual birth of Jesus. And uh, there's not a lot of detail, is there, in the Bible about the birth of Jesus? Really, that's it, what we've read. Um, of all the um, you know, time we spend celebrating, there's not a lot um, in the Bible about the actual birth of Jesus. And it was just in those first few verses at the beginning of um, Luke chapter 2. And then, of course, as the, the shepherds visit uh, later. But probably this angelic visit to the shepherds is probably the most spectacular of all of the appearances because it wasn't just one it was one to start with one angel and then we we find that it's a whole host and host just means army so like another army of angels also came to bring glory uh, to god and the story is so familiar to us isn't it uh, this whole chapter it, it, it's familiar to us mary and joseph were living in Nazareth, but they had to go to Bethlehem, which is called the city of David, because they were to be registered. There was like a census going on, and they had to go back to their roots. And they, uh, Joseph was from the line of David, and, and da David's city was Bethlehem, so that's where they had to go. Uh, there's no mention of any donkeys, by the way. There might have been a donkey involved, but we, there's no mention in the Bible of a donkey. Uh, there's no mention even of an innkeeper. Um, if you've been to lots of children's uh, uh, nativity plays, there's always an innkeeper in it, but I suppose there was one, but there's, there's not one mentioned in the, the Bible. It does mention an inn and the fact that there was no room for them. 
And of course, while they're there, we know that Mary got to the time when she needed to give birth. And uh, there was clearly no room in the inn. <clears throat> There's no mention of a stable. Although Jesus was laid in a manger, which is the trough that an animal would eat from. So it seems to have been somewhere where animals were. And I think the most likely thing, some people say stable, some people say a cave. I think the most likely thing was that it was a house that had animals underneath, which was quite common in those days, apparently, that they would build a house sort of on stilts and the animals would be underneath and the people would live and sleep above. And so, because there was no room in this building, they were sort of underneath in with the animals. So, that's the, I guess, the familiar parts. And then, and then we find these, these shepherds out on the hills nearby and at night. Imagine yourself out at night, not washing your socks, <laughs> but watching your flocks, keeping an eye on them with the fellow shepherds. Perhaps there was a few shepherds that were doing the same thing, and perhaps they would uh, get, their, get their sheep in a certain place, and perhaps they would sit together and chat, perhaps around a, around a fire. Who knows? And then something happens that absolutely terrifies them. I guess these guys that would have lived outside a lot would have been quite used to things that might scare them. Um, you know, strange noises, wild animals. They'll be quite used to being scared. <clears throat> but something happened that terrified their socks off, which was an angel appeared, and the glory of the Lord, it says, shone around. <clears throat> now, I don't know about you, but um, if you've uh, ever been awoken from a, a, in a dark room, the light shines in. It's not the, like the best feeling, is it? Um, or, or if you've uh, ever been to a matinee performance at a cinema or a theatre and it's been dark and you come walking out and the daylight hits you. Uh, I guess it was something of that sort of feeling as the glory of the Lord shone around them, but multiple times, I guess. Imagine the glory of the Lord shining in a dark field. And it's no wonder, is it, that the first words that the angel said, just like it in many of the others, is do not be afraid. They were terrified. And, and, and the angel begins to speak in verse 10. Fear not, I bring good news of great joy for all people. I mean, that, that, that sentence on its own is just worth thinking about today, isn't it? Good news of great joy for all people. Now, now that includes not just the people then, that includes us. So what the angels came to bring, the announcement of the birth, was good news today for all people and brings joy. And you might say, well, why? And verse 11 and 12, the angel continues with the word for. In other words, because. It's good news, a great joy for all people because a saviour has been born to you in David City. He is a saviour, he is Christ the Lord. This one has come to rescue you. And then, and then the most bizarre thing, uh, there's a sign. There's a sign that you'll know that you found him because he's going to be wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger, which was quite an unusual place for a baby to be laid. And then we get this bit that I want to think about um, this morning. So while these shepherds were, I guess, standing completely gobsmacked at this, at this news, suddenly a whole host, a multitude of the heavenly host, it says, were praising God and they were saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. They come praising God. And what they have to say, I think, is really helpful to us if we're craving peace today. Here's some things I think that it can teach us about this peace. Firstly, peace is found in the context of worship. So the angelic army came praising God and the first thing they say is glory to God in the highest 
And the peace of God flows from that praise to God. There's no true peace without true worship. You see, people search for for peace in healthy lifestyle. They search for peace in the things that they own or can buy. They search for peace in the things that they can wear. They search for peace in their family. They search for peace amongst their friends and the things they do with their friends. They search for peace in their job. They search for peace in community work. They search for peace in their hobbies. They search for peace in holidays. They search for peace in drugs and in alcohol. But all of those things, whilst they might bring some uh, comfort, it's always temporary. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're not a Christian, if you're weighing things up at the moment, Start your search for peace by coming to God in worship. Don't look for the river of peace without going to the source of the river, which is God himself. And if you are a Christian, don't separate your desire for peace from your desire to worship. Because peace has its roots in God. And your experience of peace will be directly linked to your experience of worship. If you're lacking in peace, then we might want to question whether we're also lacking in worship. Lacking in trust of our God and who he is and what he's done. So peace is found in the context of worship. So if you're longing for peace... Don't pursue peace as an aim in itself. Pursue God and his worship and peace will follow. So peace found in the context of worship. Secondly, peace is found in Jesus. It's found in a person. It's found in the Son of God. I wonder how you would judge your level of peace. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. And I guess as I said it at the beginning, how's your peace? It's hard to like, know how to judge. But I, I would certainly say there's been times in the year where I've felt as if I've not been at peace. There's things been going on and it's just hard to process. Not quite sure which way to turn. Not sure what direction to go. I, I just want to say your, your peace is not based on your feelings. We're not talking about just a peaceful, like, gooey feeling we're not just talking about your situation the circumstances in which you are I don't think it's completely about your health I guess it includes all these things but it's, it's not any one of them is it it's not your level of uh, isolation from infection there might be some that would feel some sense of peace because they're, they're distanced from COVID and feel safe It's not feeling safe because of your vaccine status. It's not not feeling peaceful because you know all the latest news and all the latest statistics and figures. True peace comes to our hearts, men, women, boys and girls. True peace comes to our hearts when we receive and believe the news about Jesus that the angel had just announced to the shepherds. So so, so what brings peace? Go back to the verses before. Verse 10, the angel said to them, Fear not, behold, I bring you good news, a great joy that will be for all people. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. It, It truly is a message of comfort and joy. Comfort, peace. When we think about what God has done for us, given us his son that we might be saved. He's given us a saviour. He's given us the Christ, the Messiah, the one who came to rescue us. Do you remember um, those words from uh, Isaiah? 
This wonderful prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9, it starts by speaking about the gloom and uh, uh, into that darkness. It says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has dawned. And then it says later on in, in, in chapter 9, for to us a child is born. This is where the hope's coming. It's from a child. To, a, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. What comes next? Prince of Peace. It's one of the reasons why he came, is to bring peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. If you're looking for peace, the place to go is Jesus. There's a lovely little verse. It's mentioned many times in the Gospels, this peace. But here, here's one, John 14 and verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. God's peace comes to us initially as a gift of a baby, the Lord Jesus, and then, of course, through his work on the cross. And so true peace means finding true peace with God through Jesus. And true peace with others is really only established when we ourselves know peace with God. And so if you're not a Christian, to find the true peace uh, with God, you need to stop trying to think too highly of yourself and realize that you need a saviour. That's where the peace comes from, is realizing that you need a saviour and that the perfect saviour is in this uh, Jesus. The first peace you need, in other words, is peace with God. If you're unsettled by the things of the world, if you're unsettled by the situation or by your job or your family, the place to go is not to try and sort those things out. The first place to go is to make sure that you've got peace with God. If you are a Christian, your peace with God through Jesus must remain the basis of your peace with others. And I would say, don't let other things destroy that peace. Satan has a field day, and I think he is having a field day at the moment. And one of the ways he's having a field day is through COVID. He's bringing division, he's bringing arguments, he's, he's, he's bringing... A dissension among, among Christians by having different attitudes to the virus and different attitudes to the restrictions and, and, and different attitudes to the vaccines and stuff. Someone said uh, something I thought was really helpful. I can't remember where I read it or where I saw it, but I thought it was really helpful. He said, don't let things divide us which are not the things that unite us. Don't let things divide us which are not the things that unite us. So we, we can disagree about things that aren't important or are, are less important. But we can't disagree about the things that unite us, the things of knowing Christ, the things of eternity, the trusting in his word, the following of the Lord Jesus. So peace is found in Jesus, and we need to keep Jesus as the main thing. If we start um, following down one of those rabbit holes too much, we'll find ourselves losing the peace that God gives us because we've made these other things too important. So, peace is found in worship. Peace is found in Jesus. And the last one, a rather challenging word from this verse 14. Peace is only found in some people. 
Did you notice that the good news was for all people? Good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Verse 10. Jesus, verse 11, came for us all. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. He comes for all. But the peace will only be given to some. It says in verse 14, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Only some, you see, will receive Jesus. Only some will put their faith in him. Only some will be blessed by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Only some will believe the message. And true peace, the the people that receive this peace comes when we're born again of God's Spirit, when there's a renewal of our hearts, when God by His Spirit makes us new, gives us a new desire, helps us to see our sin, helps us to turn from sin, helps us to repent, helps us to believe in the Lord Jesus. It's when we're given the righteousness of Christ. It's when we become pleasing to Him. It's not talking about pleasing him by our works here. It's talking about those who have pleased him because they've trusted in the Lord Jesus. You remember that it was was by faith, wasn't it, that Abraham was saved. And it's by faith that we are saved. Not by our, our works, but by trusting in what God has done for us. So non-Christian, are you at peace? Can you look even at death in the face and still know peace in your heart? That's the sort of peace that we're talking about. If you you can't imagine that, then reach out to Jesus in faith. Trust him. Accept him. Believe what he says. And Christian, are are you still struggling with fear and anxiety? I, I guess we all do at times. Are you still worrying about the future? We need to remind ourselves of this message of comfort and joy. I suppose what we've been doing this morning is, yeah, there's been some celebration. We we pray and we sing songs of celebration and and joy. But I'm bringing a message really of comfort. And it felt to me that as I was preparing, that what we need at the moment, with all the things that have been going on in the last couple of years, It's just the reassurance of God's God's peace, the reassurance of his presence, the reassurance that he's in control, the reassurance that he knows uh, the future. I was thinking, uh, I don't know how you'll take this, but you know know when you see R.I.P., rest in peace? We usually use that, don't we, when we're talking about someone that's died, rest in peace, you see people say. Someone they know that's died and they just say, rest in peace. I just want to encourage you to RIP today, to rest in peace, to enjoy this time of year in peace of knowing that God is in control, that he loves you, that he's given you his son, that even in the face of death, you don't need to lose that peace. For he has saved you, I hope and pray, through your faith. It's a day of comfort. It's a day of peace. A day of resting secure in God's love for us, revealed in the person and work of the Lord Jesus. It's Jesus that's made all the difference. So let your comfort and peace be in him today. And my prayer is, as we live like that, it's one thing to know it, isn't it? And to to feel good about the peace that God gives. But also it should uh, be reflected in our lives. People should see the peace that we have. And and perhaps at this moment in time in our nation, more than ever, when the country is prone to fear, prone to anxiety about all that's going on, and, and some of you will know people who are absolutely terrified about what's happening, surely it should be a time like this where our peace in God should shine to others. And perhaps we'll get opportunities to speak about our hope in this one, the Lord Jesus. Rest in him. Rest in peace.
Let me just pray and then we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountains. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the peace that you've brought us in the Lord Jesus. With the angels, we want to say glory to God in the highest. You are worthy of our praise. You're a God who has done great things. And as we thank you for it, we thank you too for the peace that you've brought to us through the Lord Jesus. Peace with God and peace with men. We pray today you'd help us to rest in that peace. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.